Hello everyone, how's it going? It's Quinton here and welcome to this tutorial on how to make high quality video tutorials at home. And this is something that I've been doing for quite a few years now. So it has been a really long road for me and I've learned quite a few things along the way. So what I'm about to share with you now are some of my biggest trade secrets as well. Uh, so let's just jump straight into it. And the first thing that I wanna to talk to you guys about is screen recorders. Now, because I'm on a Mac, I actually use QuickTime Player, which is free on Mac and works really well. It's never once crashed. It doesn't leave watermarks. It's as far as so free software goes, amazing. So if you're on a Mac, you don't need to try anything else. Of course, I know a lot of you are probably watching on a Windows computer thinking, well, what alternative do I have? So here's the thing. I have tried a bunch of free um, alternatives on Windows, things like uh, Cam Studio and Bandicam. A lot of those were terrible. They'd often, you know, you'd record something for 20 minutes, push the stop button, hope to save a video and the software crashes and you have to re-record the whole 20 minute tutorial again. Uh, so don't use any of that software. Um, but what, what I would recommend is OBS. Uh, so this is actually software that is made for uh, streaming to Twitch or YouTube, um, but uh, it is also cross-platform, so you can use this on any uh, operating system, and it has the ability not only to stream, but to record your screen as well. So if I pop my, my OBS setup over here, um, yeah, we're gonna see this whole infinity screen setup. That's because um, it's set to record the screen that I'm actually putting this on. And yeah, you can actually use this to record your screen. The, the nice thing about this is you can also set up different scenes and uh, you can set up different sources. So you can actually have a camera on there. Hi, this is me. And uh, yeah, you can set up pictures and things like that as well. Of course, you can also have a setup with maybe like a social bar at the bottom and your camera and uh, let's, I mean, we can even have some other text here. So you can have an entire setup um, when you record your screen as well, like a whole scene setup. And yeah, uh, as far as that goes, I think OBS is also, it, it works really well. It has worked really well for me in the past, but I don't really use it for my tutorials. I only use it for streaming to YouTube, so live streams, right? So uh, now that we have spoken about screen recorders, the next thing we need to talk about is audio. And audio is probably the most important part of your tutorial. And this is something that I've definitely suffered with over the past couple of years, especially right at the beginning when I didn't know anything about uh, making tutorials. Um, but yeah, the one thing you wanna make sure you're doing is that you are using a USB condenser microphone. So back in the day, I used to use headphones with a jack and um, any jacked microphone, any, any microphone that you plug into your computer that uses a jack is just gonna give off really bad hissing noises that because of feedback. So you're gonna constantly hear in the background and that's terrible. In fact, most of the time when I find videos that do that, they are almost unwatchable for me. So I can't go back and watch my old videos because it makes me cringe. So one thing that really helped me improve my audio is just switching over to a USB condenser microphone. And I mean, there are a lot of different options out there, but the bandwagon that I eventually landed up jumping onto was a Blue Yeti. So, I mean, you can see on their website, they claim to be the world's number one USB microphone. Now I'm, I can actually kind of vouch for that. Like I think that they are really great and they're not paying me to say anything nice about them. Uh, but as far as things go for the $130 or whatever that I paid at the beginning for this microphone and for the quality of the audio that I'm getting back from it and, and you know the things that I can actually create with this microphone, uh, I think it's well worth spending the money on it. Um, so yeah, <laughs> I, I quite like it. And one of the things that makes uh, Blue so great or the Blue Yeti microphone so great is, okay, one, it's a USB, micro, a USB microphone, so there's no feedback from that jack. But then the other thing is it has a built-in uh, gain control at the back of the uh, microphone. And whenever I record my screen, I make sure that that gain control is turned all the way down. So uh, yeah. That gain control, obviously, it just determines how uh, sensitive the mic is going to be and how much noise it's gonna pick up. So I turn that 
all the way down, like right down to the bottom. And that way we, I make sure that the microphone isn't picking up anything else outside of the room. We're not gonna hear any cars driving up past. We're not gonna hear any helicopters flying over. We're not gonna hear any background noise whatsoever. We're only going to hear me because I'm the closest thing to the microphone and the microphone is like less than um, 20 centimeters away from my mouth, right? Now what that does mean is whenever I record a screen recording that my audio is incredibly soft. So I do have to um, do a little bit of audio editing after I've done my recording to make the audio louder. So just to give you guys a quick demo on audio over here, this is what I sound like with the microphone gain turned all the way down to the bottom unedited, right? Now I'm gonna switch over to the audio gain turned halfway up. And so this is what it sounds like when the audio gain is about halfway up on that microphone. And the reason why I don't hear, well, the reason why I don't use this is because you can probably hear a bit of an echo in the background. And that's because my walls are quite solid. I don't really have padded walls. I do have some padding just in the section where I record, but the rest of the room um, doesn't have padding on the walls. So uh, there tends to be quite a bit of echo in here and that is really difficult to get rid of when the audio gain is turned about halfway up. You can also hear like some background hissing noise, which is also a little bit more difficult to get rid of unless I turn that audio gain all the way down. And now this is me back on the edited audio. So let me show you how I get that process right. So what I do is I edit everything in Adobe Premiere Pro, which I know is expensive software. And um, by the way, I just think it's damn well worth for what you pay for it. And what I do is I import any of my video files. So command I to import. Um, and I've got this video file here for view lifecycle hooks, which is something I've recently recorded. And um, then once that's in my uh, editor, I'll often right click and I'll say new sequence from clip. And that's because the screen that I record is a screen that is 1920 by 1080, which means whenever I say new sequence from clip over here, it will automatically set up something with all the right sequence settings. Um, so it's gonna be a 1920 by 1080 video. Right, and I know that yes, I could probably purchase a more expensive screen and then I could record everything in 4K and that's probably the next step in my tutorials evolution. But um, I haven't quite thought that that justifies the money for it just yet. Okay, so now let's take a look at uh, editing this. And the first thing I do before I start cutting this up is I want nice one nice long audio clip. So what I do is I right click on this and I edit this clip in Adobe Edition and that's going to replace the video sound here with um, an audio clip that is um, in Adobe Edition. And now I have Adobe Edition opened in front of um, Adobe Premiere Pro. And what I need to do here is edit the sound wave because you can see right now it's a bit soft. So I go to effects, amplitude and compression and then I go to normalize and I normalize this to 99 or 100%. And that just makes everything nice and loud. Now, um, it should have actually made everything a bit louder than it already uh, did. But you see, we've got this one section here where we've got uh, something that happened in the video that was just really, really loud. So what I wanna do now is just even this out and then I wanna cut off some of these strands like this. So I'm going to say effects, amplitude and compression, uh, and then I'll go to multiband compressor and I will use um, classical master, which is uh, just one of Adobe's presets but if I apply that, it should even out most of my audio. So it actually even out all of this stuff down here, although we still have uh, an audio clip here that has a really long, I guess, uh, th this was probably something, me dropping something in the video and it just, or really close to the mic and it, it made like a loud noise. So what I wanna do here is um, cut that off. So what I do is I go to effects, amplitude and compression, and I go to hard limiter and I set this to have a maximum amplitude of minus eight decibels. So that'll take some of the things that are really soft and just boost them up a little bit, but it'll take some of these things that are really loud, that are way over negative uh, eight decibels and bring them down. 
and there we go you can see that now we have a slightly more even sound clip here and then the last thing i do is i uh, want to get rid of any background noise so i can actually see um right here at the beginning if i zoom in maybe a little bit uh, there is some background noise there. I know it's quite difficult to see, but you can see because the waveform has like inconsistencies here that there is some background noise. So what I do to try and just get rid of some of that is I go to effects, amplitude and compression, and I use dynamics processing and I set up a noise gate. Uh, I know that there are other noise reduction options available, but I don't think that they work as well. So amplitude, uh, dynamics processing, and what I actually need to do here, by the way, is um, if I just zoom all the way out and have this whole thing selected, uh, what this does is it, if I leave this at default, um, normally it's set up like this and I'll just have to listen uh, for where my voice is. Uh, and I know that you guys can't hear that right now because I can't record system audio at the same time as I'm recording uh, audio from my microphone. But uh, I'll just check where my voice starts. And I can see that that's usually around um, between 10 and 20 decibels. So what I do is I just pull a noise gate all the way down here and I'll just fix this up a bit. And then I'll listen to that. So I'll listen to most of the sound clip and just make sure that uh, I don't cut my voice off at any point in time. But this means that anything that is lower than this uh, sound level, and um, I'll, I'll sometimes play around with this and bring this all the way up just a little bit. Um, but anything lower than that sound level kind of gets cut off. And that means that a lot of the breathing noises that I make will get cut off. A lot of the uh, mouth sounds, like if I uh, swallow uh, some spit or something like that, all of those noises should be at least reduced a little bit as well. So I'll, I'll listen to, to the clip for that. And I'll just make sure that uh, all of that audio is perfect, that I haven't cut off my voice. Uh, and yeah, this actually fixes most of the noise um, without making it very unnatural. Uh, and then I'll just hit apply. And uh, of course that'll apply the effect and then I'll just save this. And now that I've saved it, I can probably just pull this window aside because uh, I might need it later on in the editing process, I never know. And then I'll jump back over to Adobe Premiere Pro and when I zoom in onto my audio level here, you can see, or my, my audio levels here, you can see that um, the audio is a lot more even um, and it's a lot louder than it was before. And then once I've got the audio in place, I'll start editing the video. Uh, now, one of the things that I do just to keep editing down to an absolute minimum is I just make sure that all of my editors and everything are open in the top corner of my screen here. And then I just zoom in at about 140 or 145%, something like that. And then I'll just uh, move the screen to where everything fits. And yeah, when everything's set up like this, my code should be nice and big and visible for the uh, users who watch my videos. Uh, but also as long as I'm working only within this top corner, I don't have to like animate all these different keyframes where I move my editor around. Sometimes I do have to do that, um, but I try to avoid that as much as possible. And of course, the last thing I need to do before my video is actually finally ready is I'll just go to uh, Adobe Premiere Pro and export this uh, to YouTube or for YouTube. Um, and uh, I'll just make sure that it is a format of H.264 with uh, a preset of match source high bit rate. Uh, and I find if I change this to anything else, it will often blur the code a little bit. So yeah, whenever you're screen recording something, um, using the YouTube presets can sometimes make the code and stuff just a little bit blurry. But if you match source at the high bit rate, um, that keeps everything nice and clear. And then I just uh, queue this up to be uh, exported. And once it's exported, I upload it to YouTube. And that is my process. So thanks for watching and I'll see you guys next time. And that is the end of the video. So if you made it this far, I'm gonna assume that whatever I was teaching you now was helpful. So I just wanna say, uh, if you did make it to the, this point of the video,
subscribe and check me out on social media, especially Instagram. So all of my social media is on screen now and I'll see you guys next time.